people commonly think of oxytocin as like the bonding hormone, right? You know, uh, it's it's released maternally when women are giving birth and throughout their time as a mother, and it kind of makes them more loving and nurturing to their baby. However, uh, oxytocin, you can get in an exogenous nasal spray. I actually have some right here. And I've been using this a lot lately. Now, look, I've used it in the past and I've done some content on it, like this video here. But since I've been using it somewhat frequently over the course of the last three weeks, some really interesting stuff has happened and I want to break that down, but it's prompted me to dive deeper into the research, particularly to understand its neuromodulatory effects. Oxytocin has the ability to modulate various neurotransmitters, especially dopamine. Oxytonergic neurons have a strong interplay with dopaminergic neurons, as well as dopamine receptors. Oxytocin actually, in some regions of the brain, kind of cohabitate with dopamine receptors and act as agonists and modulators of dopamine receptors. I mean, I got studies about oxytocin inducing penile erection in rats. I've got the whole dopaminergic breakdown of the mesocortical limbic enhancement of dopamine via oxytocin. And I'm gonna break it all down for you guys in this video. Meantime, before we start the video, specials of note, supercharged dopamine, a course on hacking dopamine to the fullest extent possible is 20% off code for that is 20 now. And here's an awesome one for you guys. Torque stack is 35% off right now. For those of you that love that stack, now's the time to get it. 35% off code for that is 35 torque. Codes and links are in the description of the video. So what I want us to do off the, off the rip, is that even a phrase, off the rip? is go to uh, this paper, which is titled Oxytocin, Motivation, and the Role of Dopamine, where in their in their beginning paragraph, you know, they, they talk about kind of the, the multifaceted ability of oxytocin to affect neurotransmitters and be a neuromodulator. And specifically, they say this. In particular, oxytocin appears to impact dopaminergic activity within the mesocortical limbic dopamine system, which is crucial not only for reward and motivated behavior, but also for the expression of affiliate behaviors. We're going to go right down to the section 4.2 titled oxytocin and dopamine. All right. And the whole point of this is to give you ideas on how to use oxytocin for enhancement of the dopaminergic system. Now, there's other things that it does, too, which we're going to get to, but predominantly dopamine. I mean, it's very powerful. They go recent studies show actual Activation of oxytocin neurons thought to target the VTA stimulates mesocortical limbic dopaminergic neurons. Oxytocin receptors, okay, so receptors for oxytocin and corresponding messenger RNA have been localized within the VTA. The VTA stands for the ventral tegmental area, and all you need to know is that it's a predominant area of the brain where dopamine originates and projects. One may say, based on the research, that if people have dopamine issues, there is an issue with dopamine quantity and dopamine projection in the VTA. This is very important because oxytocin receptors are actually local within the VTA. They go extensive work done by a couple couple scientists indicates that stimulation of dopamine receptors located on the cell bodies of oxytonergic neurons within the PVN, that's the paraventricular nucleus, lead to penile erection in rats. They go oxytocin injected into the VTA. Okay, this is the veteran tegmental area where all that dopamine is projecting, induces penile erections in rats and stimulates extracellular dopamine increases within the nucleus acumens, which receive dopaminergic projections from the VTA. Now, what does all this mean? I mean, this sentence will tell us what that means. Application of an oxytocin receptor antagonist, so something that'll block those oxytocin receptors, significantly diminishes dopamine agonist stimulated dopamine release in the nucleus acumens and the erectile effect of dopamine. So basically what's happening here is if you ingest oxytocin, right? Theoretically, you'd be able to ingest, this is nasal oxytocin, and have both a dopaminergic response uh, and a prosexual erectile dopaminergic response via oxytonergic receptors, okay? O oxytocin receptors modifying the dopaminergic system. Because again, if you block those oxytocin receptors, you don't get the dopamine response. This is fascinating, boys. And look, we, we do know with chemicals like PT-141, uh, bremelinotide, the injectable 
peptide melanocortin receptor agonist that induces erections and induces libido in men that the primary mechanism of action there is hypothalamic and potentially extra hypothalamic, meaning outside of the hypothalamus, dopamine release. So, so the fact that oxytocin, when injected in the dopamine region of the brain, the VTA can stimulate an erection in a rat is pretty interesting, potentially extrapolable to humans. They go, while oxytocin regulates, regulates, and th this is the key point of it being a neuromodulator, that, that, that would totally went under our radar. Like we haven't even thought about this. I haven't really talked about this. Regulates dopamine release in the extra hypothalamic regions. Oxytonergic neurons are susceptible to modulation by dopamine themselves as they also express dopamine receptors, okay? Oxytonergic or oxytocin neurons have dopamine receptors in the cell bodies. They go, indeed, dopamine release in the nucleus acumen has been demonstrated to produce stimulation of dopamine neurons within the PVN that can ultimately activate oxytonergic neurons and induced penile erection. Like, guys, th th this I don't know if this is blowing your mind, but this is blowing my mind. Now, what it looks like, one of the primary receptors, dopamine receptors, that is able to be activated and thus catalyze some dopaminergic response in, in, in response to oxytocin is the infamous D2 receptor. And the interesting thing about where this happens in addition to some of these other extra hypothalamic areas and other regions of the brain is it happens in the limbic system, which is predominantly responsible for your libido. Oxytocin, uh, predominantly relative to the male climax, has a, a very direct interplay. In fact, it, it is from uh, a sequence of actions from the brain to the spinal cord, okay, down to the cavernosal tissue, uh, triggering essentially penile reflexes in an ejaculatory capacity. You know, with some sort of oxytocin deficiency, which is probably rare, but let's call it a hypothetical where you ingest more oxytocin, you will have, and the studies actually back that, and we're going to get to that, better climaxes. Oxytocin directly stimulates a group of neurons via oxytocin receptors um, among those neurons or on those neurons, which detect oxytocin and influence male sexual function in the rat lumbar spinal cord. Again, this whole spinal cord, you know, penile interaction, which triggers climax. This is a, a Reddit thread with a study that I followed through on, which says men with sex addiction <laughs> may have elevated levels of the love hormone oxytocin. That makes sense to me, right? I mean, you got elevated levels of oxytocin or you're ingesting oxytocin, then again, you're going to get that VTA stimulation of dopaminergic neurons, uh, modulation of dopamine D2 receptors, release of dopamine in various hypothalamus and extra hypothalamus regions, which will all contribute to good sexual function. And if we wanted something very direct, like you can take like pieces of, of scientific literature and extrapolate that out and try to theorize about what it may do in your body or whatever. But here's something very direct. <laughs> Dramatic improvement in sexual function induced literally by intranasal oxytocin. I mean, this is as direct as it gets. Where they go, results, uh, oxytocin positively impacted a number of components of sexual function, including libido, erection, and orgasm, and was well tolerated. And you're going to find papers like this where they talk about blocking dopamine receptors, specifically the D2 receptors, and then oxytocin not being able to have an anxiolytic effect or a, you know, stress reducing kind of calming tranquil effect, which it does. That's one of the things that it's capable of doing. But if you block those dopamine D2 receptors, you don't get that response as we saw in some of these previous studies, indicating that Oxytocin and potentially oxytocin receptors and their interaction with dopamine directly modulate the dopamine D2 receptor. So let's talk about those protocols. So this is the stuff that I got from a company called Nootropic Source like a while ago. I mean, you don't really need a lot of this, so I still have a ton of it left. This is a 10 mil bottle, okay? It's a 10 mil bottle. Uh, amount per milliliter is five milligrams and the volume per spray is 0.1 milliliters to 0.13 milliliters, right? It's just oxytocin and deionized water. That is all this is. You're talking about 50 micrograms, 50 micrograms per spray of oxytocin. When I dose this stuff, okay, so if you're looking to get oxytocin, try to get yourself a 50 microgram per spray uh, bottle of it, intranasal bottle of it. I dose merely two sprays, and those two sprays are spread out because one spray is 
potent enough. What usually happens to me, interestingly, and I think there may be some interaction with uh, other catecholamine neurotransmitters like adrenaline and neuroadrenaline is I get energized, right? I have some sort of increase in energy right away. It kind of feels a little unsettling initially. I'm going to be honest, it's not completely perfect. Th then that goes away. And as I've discussed before, then that sort of bonding, maybe pat paternal in this case, like, you know, in the context of me and my cat stuff comes into play and I start getting, you know, more more connected to beings, you know, beings around me. It's very interesting. At the same time, uh, the mental visceral part of libido, the part that, you know, makes you see something that you like and you it provokes a response and, you, you know, you focus on it and it activates all the system, that is definitely enhanced regardless of testosterone levels, et cetera, while oxytocin is in my regimen. Anyway, I was saying I spray one spray, wait two to three hours, possibly four. I haven't really set a timer on it. And then about three, two to three to four hours later, I dose another spray of oxytocin. Again, calming effect, tranquil effect, but interestingly energizing effect right away. I'm, I'm not really sure if it's having some sort of positive effect on erectile function because all that is generally good. It does seem to make climaxes a little more intense, which is always a plus, and it markedly impacts libido right? In, in a positive way. Look, uh, I have come across some research in the past, so caveats that uh, the more exogenous oxytocin that you ingest, the less endogenous oxytocin you're going to produce, which makes sense. A lot of systems, if you are administering them exogenously outside of your body and putting into your body, you're going to downregulate, at least temporarily, the systems internally that produce that chemical. Generally speaking, though, it's not just like the love hormone. It's not just like you're going to bond with your rabbit. It, it's got a large interplay with the dopaminergic system in a very quantifiable way via activating D2 receptors, modifying dopamine release, enhancing a dopamine activity in the regions of the brain where dopamine projects the most important region, which is the VTA. Again, I've been dosing more of it lately just as an experiment to see what it'll do. And I've gotten some pretty profound results. And that prompted me to dig deeper into the research, which was the catalyst for this video here. I hope you enjoyed it. As I said, guys, the big one, is the Torque Stack, 35% off right now. Code for that is 35 Torque. I mean, if you want instant energy, that's motivation and dopamine focused, just buy Torque. The reviews are crazy. People love this stack. They're replacing energy drinks and their $7 latte, which has 600 calories in it, which you don't even wanna do anyway. I mean, guys, uh, turn your brain on in a very noticeable way with the Torque Stack, 35% off. Those are the ingredients, very powerful stack. Uh, codes are in the description of the video. Cortex stack, 25% off. Code for that is 25 Cortex. Again, on livecortex.com, I've got uh, six video courses and five nootropics guides and testosterone guides. We got all matter of cool products to help you optimize your performance as a male to live a better life. All that stuff's at livecortex.com. All right, you can check out everything I'm associated with down in the description, including consulting with me. I hope this has been a useful, informative video for you guys. Appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to be with me. Uh, more live streams coming this week, so look forward to that. I appreciate those of you that asked questions and came to the Saturday live stream. Like the video if you liked it, or I don't know, dislike it if you disliked it. I guess that's okay. Thanks though, bucko. Sub to the channel because you're gonna love all the detailed scientific breakdowns that come out. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a great rest of your week. And I'll talk to you guys on the next one.